All right, hello then everyone as we're at the end of another week of trading on Friday the 21st of June. Now we had a couple of central banks out this week and also some UK data. We'll touch on the UK now in a minute but to start the week with the RBA. Um, no change to the interest rate, same with the Bank of England. I mean that's not what we're expecting. Although the RBA considering interest rate hikes, they put some thought into hiking interest rates at this meeting on Tuesday noting that inflation is still too high and not coming down at the pace that they wanted to. They did notice, you know, Slowing across the across the economy across a number of different metrics. Unfortunately, one of them is not inflation, right? We get more inflation figures out of uh, out of Australia next week. Our quarterly figures, the the proper headline, uh, the proper inflation figures, but we got uh, we have a monthly CPI indicator which we'll get next week. So we'll touch on that next week. But central bank looking at even hiking interest rates, positivity for the Australian dollar over the course of this week. And yeah, you'd have to imagine that is likely to continue, especially as these other central banks now begin to cut interest rates. Um, Bank of England had inflation to think about on Wednesday, 2% inflation, inflation back at 2% for the first time in three years in the UK. But not all is uh, not all as well when it comes to inflation. You can see core CPI still at 3.5%. That is still too high. Certainly not at the point in which they can cut interest rates. Services inflation. Um, services inflation was 5.7%. You know, a component in, in those in those inflation prints is services weighted inflation print that the, uh, the Bank of England released was 5.7% year over year. Right. Obviously, the the services sector throughout the UK is you know, a big component, more, 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 uh, like a bigger component than the manufacturing sector. It's normally the other way around in, in, in a lot of countries. Manufacturing is normally bigger than services. In the UK, it is the other way around. It is services bigger than, than manufacturing. So services inflation is still being 5.7% again is, is too high. But they did release a statement within their, uh, you know, there was a sentence within their statement on, uh, on Thursday when the Bank of England were out that um, they, they noted that they that, that services inflation was high and was still too high, but it was just a blip, and you know it was just some yeah, for some kind of seasonal adjustments and stuff um, that wasn't to be longer lasting and wasn't to affect inflation outlook in the uh, in the medium term. So still, a few of them considered moving to an interest rate cut, but kind of just didn't just simply due to that figure. So I think at the next Bank of England meeting, you'll definitely see more than two of the nine members voting for a cut uh, a cut there. Still work needs to be done. Core CPI needs to come down. However, they said they do expect inflation to go back up to 2.5% through the year end, which again is not brilliant, but um, that's kind of what, what the situation is at the moment. Can't really dispute that that's what they're expecting. I've been relatively correct when it comes to inflation predictions. I've been too correct when it comes to a lot of other things, the central banks, but again, I'm not getting into that. Uh, the SMB did cut the interest rates. So we're kind of thinking, do they, do they not? It was 66% priced in. So you did have a, a, a you know, a big, 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 spike lower in the in the Swiss franc with that um, repricing needed after the interest rate cut. So <clears throat> they've noted that I kind of was thinking like they have they had a weaker currency or were trying to weaken their currency and it got to the point where the currency was weak about a month back and then uh, Thomas Jordan, the chair of the SMB, came out and said that a weaker currency would lead to higher inflation and they would like a bit of a stronger currency. And then currency has been strengthening then over the last month I mean, has strengthened aggressively on the Swiss franc over the last month and um, then I was kind of thinking the cut interest rates reverse all that strength but that's what they went and did so uh, with them coming from an interest rate of minus 0 0.75 they will want to get that interest rate down a little bit further you would uh, you would have to imagine but uh, Dovish SMB right, hawkish RBA and probably a more dovish reaction to the Bank of England. Once you had that inflation figure, that services, the, the 5.7%, you, know, you kind of think to yourself, oh, hang on a minute, they're not going to want to cut interest rates. But they said that's just a blip, will not impact medium term inflation. I think markets are taking that and, and run with it and think, okay, you know, it's a bit more of a dovish reaction, nothing to see there. And we can we can move on with uh, move on with that. You can see the Australian dollar strength over the course of the week, Kiwi dollar, but all over the place. Euro dollar still got a bit of headwinds from from the ECB cutting interest rates not so long ago and obviously the political situation in France did send the euro lower when it first happened. I kind of think the sentiment from that is starting to fade out a bit but ultimately ECB started to cut interest rates when the US dollar hasn't. So um, you see cable has had a bit of downside off the back of those um, 
off the back of the um, the Bank of England the other day or yesterday, and then you know inflation kind of came out Wednesday morning. You would, ex- uh, would expect maybe just a pop a bit higher off the back of inflation, but yeah, maybe rockets can see through a bit of that as well. And you know the dollar continues its uh, trend higher. There's been some comments this week though. Uh, <clears throat> Bank of Japan's Governor Ueda suggested that they may potentially look at uh, hiking interest rates again in in July. And then also, then you had some you know, a bit of job owning from some Japanese officials saying that they are prepared to step in again if needed. They sound like a broken record at this rate, which again, it's just stupid. I mean, the reasons why the the, the Japanese yen is is weak is because of the interest rate situation. Is because of quantitative easing. That's not something that has stopped or changed. You know, you can job on and you can intervene all you want, but ultimately the reasons why this currency is weak still remain. The only way they can really fix this is by going and, and going on a hiking cycle, which has widespread implications across the economy with their debt to GDP level. So what you do there, I don't really know. There's only so many times you can go and pump, you know, pump $60 billion trades, you'd imagine. I mean, I suppose you can print more money and do it again, but I ultimately, you know, you had a couple of interventions back here saying they want to do it again you're above the second intervention 160 was the price where they intervened the first time I'm up at 159 at this moment in time i'd like to see markets go up and test it again it's probably an opportunist opportunistic trade um you can get back up towards 160 maybe a stop up at 161 and target somewhere down here 155 or something like that might be a might be a good option but then if they do that and they're going to get you just get long again i mean just buy it straight back up here you feel it's a it's a bit of a risky trade at that point in time but ultimately the reasons why this thing has been trending higher for so long has not changed so yeah i mean what do you do when it comes to that if you're the bank of japan and if you're the ministry of finance i don't know intervene obviously but envy their position i'm not gonna lie to you um Another one trending higher this week is oil. Oil has trended higher. You know, you, kind of stock markets have, have kind of grinded their way higher. I mean, NVIDIA at one point this week was the world's most valuable company after overtaking Microsoft, then had a downside day yesterday, and that has been reversed. So they're not the most valuable company in the world. It's back to Microsoft. And that was likely that is likely to oscillate, but you'd have to imagine NVIDIA shares keep going higher from here. You know, on certain metrics when you study individual stocks, I don't think it's too overbought at this point in time, considering uh, you know how well the company is actually doing. It's not it's not I mean you can call it a bubble, do whatever you want, but ultimately the econ- the the company is performing extremely well. That reflects in higher stock prices how high it goes though is a different different question. But um so yeah, upside this week off the back of that. Equity markets were closed on on Wednesday for uh, for Juneteenth day. Um, in the uh, in the US, bonds were closed on on Wednesday as well. Bonds have done nothing over the course of this week. It's not too much to see there. Oil has continued its advance higher. Two straight weeks of of declining inventories have contributed to some upside in the price of oil. Uh, <clears throat> still talking about you now Israel. Israel advancing deeper into Rafa geopolitical tensions and stuff over there. Personally. Personally, I'm not too fussed with that anymore. I mean, it's kind of old news at this point. It's been going on for a while. There's been no kind of retaliations and, and reactions in terms of oil over there at the, kind of since the inception of, or since that kind of, I say started, it's been going on for years, but since it kicked off properly, I think it was September, was it September? September, October when it kicked off, kicked off more aggressively. So yeah, I don't really think that's much got to do with it. Declining inventories in the US probably has a little bit more to do with it but that's what's up this week that is what's down this week and um, we'll have a look next week at markets when we get to it uh, i'll have another video one day breaking down the week ahead next week but that's it from me then have a good weekend recharge the batteries as always and we'll see you next week for another week of trading have a good one